Today we're gonna to be talking about how to fit your mountain bike. Call it mountain bike fit 101. Uh, we're gonna start out talking about rad, which is your rider area distance, which is from your pedal to your handlebar, measure it down like this. Um, it's a real quick and simple way to get that measurement. It's not at all, uh, it's not by any means the only measurement um, that you're gonna take or you can consider, but um, it gonna, it's gonna bring in a lot of those. So it's reach numbers, uh, your stack height, your handlebar, your handlebar height, your stem reach, um, the handlebar sweep, the roll, all that. We're gonna go into that a little bit different. We'll talk about handlebars in a whole separate video, so stay tuned for that one. Um, but today we're gonna just get your basic measurements. So to do that, there is a formula out there, it's called RAD, it's your rider area distance. And if you're male, you're gonna multiply your height in centimeters by 4.47. And if you're like me, and you're in between sizes of frames as they are right now, if you're, if you're only going by reach, it's helpful. Um, my last bike, the reach numbers look good, everything looked good. I think it was a little bit too small. It was a Pivot Trail 429. I chose a medium. I'm 5'11", 5'10", somewhere in there. It depends what time of day you measure me. I can never really get that bike to fit right. It fit pretty decent, um, but it probably should have gone with large on that one. So when I moved on to the Specialized here, I went with the larger frame. So I went with an S4. I'm right in between S3 and S4. The S4, reach for specialized is really really short um, given the most contemporary mountain bikes this one was a little bit longer than i wanted but it actually fits really well um, so i kind of use this measurement the rad measurement to get these numbers and measuring from here to here on both my bikes which were about the same which so it just came down to the overall reach just bear in mind that your rider area distance or your rad measurement is just one thing to consider when you're fitting your bike but That'll get you started if you like the bike that you're already riding. Uh, it's good to take that measurement and then correspond that to a bike that you're looking at or a bike that you want to ride um, and kind of compare the two that way. So to get that measurement, simply measuring from the center of your bottom brackets or your spindle, center of your crank spindle to the bar in this area here. So. It helps if you have a tape measure that does um, millimeters or centimeters, um, since that's how most of this stuff is measured. So that gives me an overall to where the bar meets about 830. Um, so that's my rider area distance measurement. Okay, so we have our rad measurement from here to here. So how does that correspond to reach or the other version of rad where you take your height in centimeters and multiply it by if your male your 4.7 so let's do that real quick let's see what i am uh, i'm roughly if you're converting centimeters to feet uh i'm about well 182.5 is 59.8 so 510 ish so roughly if i put a 183 in there i'm six feet tall so again i'm in between sizes. So let's use 182. <clears throat> so 182.5 times 4.47 equals 815. Now these aren't foolproof measurements. You may mess around with them a little bit. You may want more weight on the front end. You may feel like just the characteristics of your bike that you're losing control on the front end. So you may want more, so you may want to go with a longer stem or as I'll speak in another video about saddles, move your saddle forward. Now put more weight on the front end as well. So <clears throat> now how does that correspond to reach? Well, reach isn't the only number that you can go off of based upon a bike. That just gives you kind of a distance of how long that front end is going to be. Other things you can take take into consideration is wheelbase, how long you want the wheelbase to be, how long the chain stays, whether you are centered in the bike when you're standing on it. So you can have a really long front end and really short chain stays 
and you're gonna feel like you're off the back of the bike the whole time. So you may have to size up um, or maybe just do a different bike if that one's not working for you. Or maybe you like that characteristic. Maybe you're the guy out there that pulls manuals all the time, wheelies everything. So you may want a shorter rear end. Uh, I like to feel balanced in the center line of the bike. And I also like a little bit longer bike as far as total wheelbase. That's your rad measurement, that your rider area distance. So I tend to go with that one a little bit more because like I said, on my previous bike, it had about the same distance if you measure that and I haven't changed height. So, you know, 815 is about, about what I'm looking for um, somewhere in there. So again, a little bit longer rad measurement, shorten up the stem a little bit, gets me where I want to be. Um, if that makes sense. I mean, I know this is, if I were to put a 50 mil stem on, it's gonna be 15 millimeters longer. It's not gonna bring it all the way back to that 815. Just gives you another measurement. I hope this helps um, if you're changing bikes or you kind of want to get a better fit for your bike. There are other things that you can change and we'll discuss those in other videos, but this is, if you're going to a new bike and you like the way your bike feels, but you just want to try something different, this is a good area to start is with that rad measurement. So you can get it one of two ways by multiplying and you get like a rough estimate of where you want to be where you can measure your current bike setup and see where that is. Um, again, there's gonna be numerous factors that play into the overall fit as far as stack height between different manufacturers. Um, your standover height, if you want more standover height, some bikes have it, some bikes don't. This one, I lost a lot of standover height as opposed to the pivot that I was on, but I'm okay with that. I'm still, it's still got decent standover height for me. Uh, but if you're on the smaller side and you want more stand up, stand over height, that should be something you consider as well. But I hope this explains rad a little bit more. You can look it up. There's a book out there called Dialed, not to be confused with Dialed, the show about Fox suspension. Um, but it'll give you a better understanding of how bike fits work. And again, you can go visit your local bike shops. And if they offer custom fitting, it's a good route to go. Could be somewhat expensive. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily need it on a mountain bike, but if you're a cross country racer uh, or want to get more involved in that, then the overall bike fit, because you got to think about how long you're going to be on that bike. And you know, those things are made to be really efficient and a little bit harsh. So you want it to be as comfortable as possible. It's not going to be like riding on a cloud, like a downhill bike or a big full enduro bike. So if you're road cycling, um, cross country person, uh, wants the most efficient bike, but wants it to be ultimately pretty comfortable for a long time, to, for a long time in the saddle and pushing hard, then I would recommend getting a custom bike fit from a reputable bike shop that has experience in doing so. But overall mountain biking, I think you can get away with, you know, how that feels um, based on your personal preferences and previous bikes. So thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. I hope this explains a little bit on Bike Fit 101 and uh, how we got there. So have a good day, ride the bike.